SRA, but everything's starting to weaken and push out of here as we get ready for a nice sunny and dry day tomorrow. All those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 and 7, Piedmont Somerville reopens in grand fashion. We'll take you to the ribbon cutting. Also ahead, employees at Payne College have been stripped of their benefits. We'll hear from some of them who are affected. And the champion finally crowned by the 1981 Girls State Basketball Champions are just now getting their rings. And Journey News at 7 starts now. This is WGBF News Channel 6 at 7. Good evening, everyone. You're watching News Channel 6 at 7. I'm Dee Griffin. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with faster care now available with the reopening of an old hospital in Augusta. Piedmont Augusta Somerville campus will officially reopen tomorrow after a ribbon cutting ceremony this morning. Here's Isabella Moody with more. This campus is an amazing resource for the community, and having it closed um, really was something that uh, was a problem. And so we heard loud and clear from the community that they wanted the campus uh, reopened. And so thanks to an amazing leadership team, we've been able to work together over the past nine months to uh, figure out how to renovate the facility. Augusta Mayor Garnett Johnson and the CEO of Piedmont Augusta, Dr. Lily Young Henson were joined by other dignitaries for a ribbon cutting this morning. Piedmont's model is care close to home, so we're always looking at how do we provide comprehensive services closer to where our patients are. And uh, so we know that this campus is a really good asset to us as a healthcare system and to this community. So we're just constantly looking at what makes the most sense to uh, provide new services to our community. And, and so we say this is something new, but really it's just a new beginning for something that has existed for a long time. We wanted to make sure we had the best top-notch quality equipment here at the Somerville campus so that when a patient comes here, they know that they're getting that quality, safe, uh, top standard care. The campus has 15 ER beds, 12 inpatient rooms, a full service lab, and updated imaging. There will also be a designated ambulance 24-7 to take patients from the hospital to higher level care if needed. We're very excited to see that Piedmont logo rolling around town. Um, we're, we're really proud of that. And, and just again, it makes all the hard work that the entire Piedmont team has put into this and all of our contractors that have helped us. It just makes it all worth it. Time now for a first look at our weather and meteorologist Jennifer Petracci is here and it seems like they were able to dodge the rain this morning in yeah. order to have that ribbon cutting but a lot of us had uh, our share of rain throughout the day. That's right, very summer like storms today D. Those storms that just pop out will have sunshine and then all of a sudden you start to hear the thunder and the lightning. That's exactly what happened just a couple hours ago right across the metro. We had one very heavy downpour, some thunder and lightning around Augusta and even a severe thunderstorm storm warning earlier in Aiken, Edgefield, and Saluda County. But now as we take a look at Live by Verse 6, things are definitely improving. Still a little bit of lightning down there in Barnwell County, but that storm is definitely losing its punch, actually mostly in Allendale and Bamberg now. There's a closer look at that cell. The heavy rain is moving out. It's headed towards Earhart right now. Uh, Denmark, you are now in the clear. Hilda looking better. Barnwell, just some light showers over you and some of that light rain moving into Allendale, the city. As we look further towards the west now over in San Andersville, we would have one isolated cell there. And then we also have some of this rain in Elmira over into Jefferson County. This is to the south of Louisville. And over here we have Burke County with just some light rainfall. And notice on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Sky View Cam in Waynesboro, this is the storm that we're looking at. It's a uh, shelf cloud here. Very, very cool view there in downtown Waynesboro. Today our high temperature was 85 degrees. That's pretty much close to average. Low this morning, well above average. We were at 68 when on average we're at 59. We'll be back to around our average tonight. Temperatures will be falling to around 60 degrees, but in the meantime, we have a mix of upper 60s through mid 80s. So a big variety of temperatures, warmer where there's sunshine, 77 in Allendale, only 68 in Barnwell with the rain, 78 in Evans, 85 though in Millen where it's been dry all day, 77 in Lincolnton and Edgefield, 80 in Waynesboro and Augusta, only at 73. The dew points are pretty high. It's definitely been a muggy day and a little bit breezy as well. Eight mile per hour winds in Waynesboro, 12 in Millen, 11 in Louisville with those winds gusting up to 26 
in Allendale, 23 in Millen, 21 in Aiken. And over the next couple of hours, we'll start to see that rain move out as the cold front passes through and high pressure takes over. Severe thunderstorms ongoing across the, the two state here up into North Carolina as well. But for us tomorrow, we'll be back to sunshine. So enjoy that because the rain moves back in quickly. All those details coming up back to you, Dave. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you then. A former employee of Augusta National Golf Club pleads guilty to stealing millions of dollars worth of merchandise. Richard Globinski was accused of transporting stolen goods and merchandise from the Masters between 2009 until 2022. Investigators say he took them to Tampa, Florida, knowing they were stolen. He was charged in the Northern District of Illinois. Sentencing is set for October 29th. Globinski faces up to 10 years in prison. The death investigation of a toddler is underway in Aiken County. According to the coroner, a bird bath accidentally fell on Jasmine McHale Sunday at a home in Warrenville. The three-year-old was taken to the Children's Hospital of Georgia and died the next day. An autopsy will be performed. A local cybersecurity firm is making a game-changing contribution to USC Aiken. Still Gate donated $25,000 to the school, creating scholarships for cybersecurity and computer science students. Age Award will be designated for computer science majors with a 3.0 GPA or higher. The plan is to grant 25 scholarships of $1,000 each to students from area high schools. We're trying to get the interest of those students and bring up the spotlight that there's a lot of great programs here in the CSRA. And of course, honestly, as those kids, uh, go, where they go to school, a lot of them will stay around that area. Students can apply for the scholarship this fall. They will be awarded for fall of 2025. Payne College is suspending benefits for all faculty and staff, and some of those affected are speaking out. Graham Lee explains. The college sent a letter to faculty and staff last Friday saying their health, life, and disability benefits would be suspended. And employees I spoke to say it came as a surprise. We were blindsided by the letter. We got the letter on Friday and, you know, we didn't know what was going on. We haven't been told what was what's going on. The letter coming from Vice President Leroy Summers with Administrative and Fiscal Affairs and not the school's president, Dr. Cheryl Evans-Jones. The letter states this is happening because those insurance plans have been temporarily suspended by our carriers. I guess they're telling us in layman's terms, don't get sick, don't become disabled, and definitely don't die no time soon. Other employees who did not want to be identified are also sharing their frustration. This is crazy. I'm sitting here looking at it still. I don't, yeah, it wasn't coming. I, I will tell you that. Like, there was no forewarning of, like, you know, hey. Some things could happen in the next month or so. Like, nobody said anything. We reached out to the school, and neither Jones nor Summers could comment at this time. We love the institution, but I'm like, as a family, that we're supposed to be this family, I think that the love needs to be reciprocated. So I think that's something that definitely needs to happen. Now, we received a statement from Payne College, the spokesperson saying the college decided to pursue a more cost-effective provider due to the rising cost of maintaining health benefits for employees. The college was not able to reach an agreement with its recent provider, which resulted in canceling the coverage. President Dr. Charles Evans-Jones says the school is currently working to find a new insurance carrier to provide service for a lower cost. Well, the president of Augusta University gave his final state of the university address today. Dr. Brooks Keel is retiring in June. He highlighted last year's big moments, including the enrollment of more than 10,000 students and the official launch of Augusta University Online. He also talked about future goals for the university. We've laid an incredible foundation. Uh, you know, we've gotten rid of all the, the baggage that came with the name changes and all that sort of stuff. We have a tremendous sense of pride here we've never had before. Uh, that the way our research is going now, it's only going to start to get better. Uh, we, we're our, our enrollment for next fall looks to be higher than the fall we had this time around. It doesn't appear to be an end in sight. And we wish him the best. Dr. Kill was appointed president of Augusta University in 2015. A local women's basketball team being recognized 43 years after their high school state championship win. Bria Smith had the chance to attend the ceremony at Warren County High School. That's the sound.
found a group of women made after waiting 43 years to place their championship rings on their fingers. Well, we want to say championship, and I'm proud of our academy. Vera Grissom Williams was a part of the 1981 Lady Devil team. She also became part of the Warren County High School history another way. Graduation day. In my sophomore year, which was also the year that we won the state championship in basketball, um, we had a competition. The school had a competition for school songs. So the school had never had a school song before. And I entered the competition, and my song was selected um, near Warren County High um, in the tune of We've Only Just Begun. As a former women's basketball coach, Principal Dr. Roger Hilton said he had to make sure the Lady Devilettes got what they deserved. I think it means a lot to them, and them know that we still care about them, we still love them, and that we're still here to recognize them, that we really appreciate them. Williams and Dr. Hilton say they hope today can be a lesson for current students to think about what they want with their legacy at Warren County High School. We're blessed with great kids here, strong academically, so we hope that this inspires our young ladies that, hey, if you work hard, you can have the same things. In Warrington, Bruce Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. And congratulations to those ladies. I like that, the devilettes. Well, Magnolia Cemetery in Augusta has a new benefactor. And on Live Viper 6, we're seeing the thunderstorm start to fade away. And we'll have plenty of sunshine headed our way tomorrow. All those details when we return. 89. Quick, quick. accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. I want to start out with a school shout out. Today I visited North Harlem Elementary School right there in Harlem, Georgia, and I visited all of these great first graders. It was an awesome school visit and actually my final school visit of the 2023-2024 school year. It's the 42nd one, so it's been a blast, but wow, there's been a lot of school visits. Probably a good thing I take a break until next August, uh, but thank you so much, North Harlem, for having me, and also a special shout out to the teachers, Andrea, for setting up, setting up this visit with me, and also Christina, who is pictured here. She is a big time WJBF viewer, so thank you all for having me. I had a wonderful time. Here's a look now at Live by Verse 6. We do have some storms across the area, but they're all starting to fade now, so that's the good news. I'm not expecting any severe weather the rest of this evening. Most of the CSRA is actually dry. Here's a look at Barnwell, Bamberg, and Allendale counties. Just some scattered light rain showers. Notice the heaviest rain just moved through Earhart and is now across the border outside of our viewing area. We don't have any lightning left across the CSRA with these storms. Notice in Jefferson County, just some brief heavy rain around Moxley, Old Town, Aldridge, but other than that, not looking bad at all. Really, really cool view to hear, though, on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam from Wellstar MCG Health. This is what we call an anvil. So this is a mature thunderstorm that's reached its final stage. And you can see it's flattened out here because it's reached the stratosphere. So this is a weakening storm. And this camera is actually facing the northeast. And we see these storms from a big difference. And this is actually the storm all the way up in Newberry County, so far away from the metro. But we can actually see it there on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam, which is really cool. 73 here in town, rain cooled air across the area. Temperatures anywhere from the 70s to 80s, warmer in places that didn't get any rain. We have a cold front coming through. That's the reason for the storms today. It's causing severe weather up in the Midlands into the Charlotte Metro. Luckily for us, we don't have to worry about that. And tomorrow, finally, no rain in the forecast. Nice sunny skies. It will be starting out in the 60s, climbing into the mid 80s, high of 86 tomorrow. Pretty consistent temperatures throughout the week, hovering around average. So no chance of rain tomorrow, but scattered storms in the forecast Friday and Saturday and a pretty high chance of rain for Saturday. So our future cast here starting tonight at 8 o'clock showing that cold front moving through. We'll have nice clear skies for tomorrow. Then as we go into Friday, starting out dry, scattered showers throughout the afternoon. And then we'll be watching this area that will move in Friday night into Saturday. And we'll have to watch that closely for some severe weather potential. As I mentioned, high chance of rain Saturday and some scattered storms into Sunday. That 10-day forecast showing the rain chances throughout the weekend. But next week we'll be drying out, back to sunshine with those temperatures staying very warm in the mid to upper 80s. We'll be right back.
We're starting a movement. Hunter Jackson, attorney at law. We're starting a movement. The WGBF Live Viper 6 Skyview Network is sponsored by Terry Lambert Hunting. Low prices, big selection, and committed to quality customer service. Dozens of Red Lobster locations across the country have abruptly closed. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the popular chain is filing for bankruptcy amid steep losses. Marina Roy has more. Ultimate Endless Shrimp is here. An Endless Shrimp promotion may not be reeling in the results Red Lobster had hoped. Our famous garlic shrimp scampi. The beloved restaurant chain with those famous cheddar bay biscuits suddenly shutting down dozens of locations around the U.S. At least 99 branches in 27 states. Tagax Brands, a company that handles restaurant liquidation auctions, telling ABC News that Red Lobster recently contacted them to auction off items from 52 stores. During an earnings call last year, Red Lobster investor Thai Union Group sharing that Red Lobster's ultimate endless shrimp promo cost the brand millions of dollars in losses. Something which was different from our expectation is the proportion of the people selecting these promotion was much higher compared to expectation. Its first location opened in Lakeland, Florida back in 1968, soon becoming one of America's most popular restaurants. But according to a major investor, last year, Red Lobster recorded a $19 million loss in the first nine months. The Wall Street Journal reporting that the brand is expected to file for bankruptcy as early as next week. Consumers now are looking for value when they're going outside of the home. And I think that consumers really ate more than Red Lobster could afford. And now it's unclear if Red Lobster plans to shutter any additional restaurants in the near future. Currently, there are still hundreds of locations worldwide. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Right now, Augusta's not on the list for closure, but y'all gonna eat up those uh, cheddar bay brisk biscuits and keep them open. Up next, Dolly Parton may be entering the donut business. Speaking of eating, I'll buy her donuts. We'll be back after this break. Don't wait. Drastic discounts right now. At Greensboro Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. New Gladiator Rubicon. Discount at 6500 If you can't come to us, we'll drive it to you. Take the short drive on Highway 25. Good to go. Waynesboro.com. My name is Michael Walker. Save over eight grand on luxurious new Wagoneers. Now in Waynesboro. Get instant credit approval. Every vehicle deeply discounted at Winsboro Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Good to go, <laughs> Dolly Parton is getting into the donut business, sort of. She's partnering with Krispy Kreme to release some Dolly-themed donuts. They're calling it the Southern Sweets Collection. Flavors include banana pudding pie and peachy keen cobbler. And Miss Dolly says the flavors remind her of home. On Saturday, May 18th, customers can get a free original glazed donut if they show up to Krispy Kreme locations dressed like Dolly or wearing Dolly merchandise. Uh, we have the details on our website. Just go to WJBF.com, and that's pretty cool. Pretty sweet deal. Those look good. Yeah. Oh, between that and the Red Lobster, the show is torturing me. I will always love Dolly Parton and Krispy Kreme. Oh, me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, sorry, our, our 10 day forecast now showing the sunny skies tomorrow will be a beautiful day. Go out and enjoy the weather because we're back to the rain chances this weekend. Scattered storms Friday and Sunday, and a high chance of rain at 70% Saturday. A cloudy day with the chance of strong, severe storms. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for joining us. We're always with you at WJDF.com.